when I got in touch with Jan Hutton from Stafford Rescue Victoria, and she's the vice president, she did comment that Ballarat and District, the wider uh, area, is one of the hot spots for dog fighting, one of the state's worst areas. Apparently, the Mornington Peninsula is also quite bad. Jan Hutton from Stafford Rescue Victoria is with us this morning. Jan, good morning to you. Hi, Steve. How are you? Very well. When we talk about dog fighting, can you just explain what it is that you're referring to? This is this is betting and dog fighting. Yes. That yes. goes on. Yeah, dog fighting industry. It is real. Um, I'm not saying all dogs that are stolen are used in the fighting industry, but it does go on, um, and they are used as bait dogs mostly because they've already got their fighting dogs. And um, I've got an ex-bait dog here with me. Her feet were tired with wire and she's a tiny little Stafford that was just a total mess. There's no way we could rehome her. Not physically, mentally she was a total mess. But yeah, if they're stolen. If they're entire, not desexed, they're, um, they're more desirable because the hormone level is detectable in this fighting dog, so it will wind him up more. Um, or there's the other reason they're stolen for back yard breeding. So it's better to desex your dogs. Not that we want any more out there anyway, so it is better that you desex your dogs, but it is for real. It is going on. Mm. So so the the idea that or the the story that Nick heard that people were having their dogs stolen, as far as you're concerned, uh, it it may not be that prevalent because police aren't investigating, but it is real and it does go on. Oh yeah, it does go on. That, but but it's not only Staffords, it's not only bull breeds that are, are stolen to wind up the um, fighting dog. It's other dogs as well. Anything that will scream will will wind up the the dog that's going to go in the ring. So um, bull breeds are tougher. That's why they they choose the bull breeds. But as I say, we've also got the problem of backyard breeders. They they want to steal a dog that's entire a female bitch or a male you know, entire dog that they can use to earn money from. Um, and people should be more aware of what's going on in their next door neighbours' yards, etc., and what's going on late at night. I have known people to see transportation of dogs late at night, which is rather suspicious. One woman I know started chasing the car or following the car, and that was in your area. Mm. And... Um, they turned off and then they started to do a U-turn to chase her. So she got out of there. She didn't get the registration number because it was late at night. Um, but that would have most probably been people travelling to a fighting, um, and, you know, night of fighting. But their places are so remote, people don't know that's going on. And as I said, people rock up, they have loud music to drown out the sound of the dog fighting. It's just like a party. Some people might think there's a party going on there, but mostly they're in such remote areas that you wouldn't, no one would know what's going on. And the aim uh, of this is that uh, out of the two dogs that go into the fighting ring, one survives, because uh, my understanding is often it's fight to the death. Yeah. And uh, and people bet on it, on the outcome, and uh, make a bit of money and have a few beers, and, and they have a jolly old time watching this. Yeah, very sick. That's exactly right. How common is it? Jan, do you believe that there is dog fighting in Victoria? Um, I should say it goes on more than what people would like to think. It's just um, it's hard for the police to detect because they're, so, they're underground but, and no one's reporting any suspicious movement. But I don't know whether it would go on weekly, monthly. I, I just don't know. But I don't think all the dogs are getting stolen at the that for fighting industry. And people are saying people are taking houses, putting, um, you know, a sticker on a house or a bit of paint because there's a dog in the house. Well, burglars use that as well. So that means there's a dog in the house, don't burgle the house. <laughs> so mm. it's, uh, it's not always because someone's going to come and steal your dog. Yeah, OK. Tell me about your group. How long has Stafford Rescue Victoria been going? Oh, well... There, it was, we were linked with the Staffordshire Bull Terrier Club of Victoria, oh, I think early 80s that started, or even earlier, and there was always a rescue group, but I met Linda about eight years ago, and we got it up and running 
really, really quite professional now, and we're a charity. But we started the charity as of November last year and broke away from the club because we had to become a charity. Um, so it's been going for some years, but as a charity since last November, and and was me and Linda running it eight years. So, All right. Yeah. Um, what do you do mostly? Um, we rehome dogs, staffers, um, people that can't. You know, circumstances change. They've lost their house or divorce or whatever. Death sometimes. We take the dog. We rehome it, but I screen people very well. We assess the dog and we match the dog. We get as much information as possible from the previous owner. If it comes from a pound, we don't really know much about the dog. We do an assessment on it and we match that dog to the home and then we're there for the rest of the dog's life. Mm. We support the dog for the rest of his life. So that's our service. But then a few months ago, someone in New South Wales, they were desperate. Their dog needed a cruciate operation, so we helped pay for that, but we raised the funds for that. Um, so it's about welfare as well as rehoming. Now, when, when we talk about Staffords, are we talking about the short Staffordshire yes. Terriers as yes. opposed to, say, the American Staffordshire, which is a, the taller, sort of often referred to as a fighting dog? Yes, that's right. So you're talking well, about the, the little brindle... Staffordshire yeah. mostly. The smaller one that people call English mm. Staffordshire Terriers. Um, the American Staffordshire, yeah, they're a lot taller. Um, but I don't know whether it'd be used in the fighting industry. I don't. I don't know. It's. I, I've never been to a, a fight, so there's yeah. no way I'd be able to tell. And I don't know anyone. I, I wouldn't know anyone. And I wouldn't like to see that. Yeah, I wouldn't like to meet anyone that's ever been to a fight because I don't know what I do. Mm. So it is real and it does go on, essentially. Yes. yes. But right. very hard to police and very hard to detect by the sound of it. Yeah, because they move around a lot. And uh, well, everyone knows what went on at Rockbank with the, the people that got busted there. Mm. That was um, bull breeds, killing sheep and um, goats and people watching that. Yeah. So the RSPCA... Uh, and sort of working on this much because I know a lot of the time their resources are stretched as well. Yeah, that they, there's nothing they can do either. I mean, how do you find these people? Mm. Unless somebody gets into that network of people and dobs them in, there's, there's just no way of finding them. It's easier with um, the cockle fight and that, that's just, there's ways that they've got, that they can detect that. But, which I won't give away on air, but, but they, um, with dogfighting, there's just no way of following these people. I guess one of the best ways from what you've been saying and, and sort of tracking some of this down is, is if people no, notice suspicious stuff around them in their neighbourhood with dogs of these breeds. Yep, that's also, And also when someone gets a, a fully grown dog, where have they got that dog from? And um, if they're going to breed from it, that could be a stolen dog as well. Um, sometimes they breed them to use the pups for bait dogs, you know, when they get older. Because they can't keep going stealing dogs for bait dogs. Mm. And now they're muzzling the, the fighting dog. Some of them muzzled the fighting dog. So, like my little girl, Bindi, her feet were tied up with wire and you could see the scratch marks on her belly um, and still can. And you can still see the scarring on her feet from it will be there for life. She would have just had a muzzled dog and she would have been screaming and laying there while he was, you know, having a go at her. Mm. And then they threw, took the muzzle off through him in the ring and just left her laying there. That's the sort of thing that would have happened to her. Um, if they didn't muzzle them, they would be out there daily stealing dogs, you know. So um, they're learning to uh, muzzle them now. So, mm. yeah. It's a very unpleasant thing, Jan, yeah. but worth raising and letting people know. Yeah. What, yeah. what is going on and, and the fact that it probably, while it's very much under the radar, it is probably happening, uh, you know, more than most of us would like to think it was able to, to happen. Yeah, it's definitely not an urban myth. It's one of the club members' dogs got stolen and it was uh, found on the side of the road, ripped to shreds, you know, just disposed of. There's another story that I've heard of the same thing, I won't give the area away because... Um, but her dog was at, left at her front door minus a leg, um, but still alive. It had to be euthanised. It's definitely going on. And that was in the city. Mm. So, 
it's just awful. Yeah. It's horrible, horrible people. It, it is uh, quite awful. Uh, if people want to contact you, best through the website, Jan? Yes, staffaddressvictoria.org.au. Mm. Thank you for your time. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, Jan Hutton, Stafford Rescue, Victoria.